The cranial nerves. The examination of the cranial nerves is best performed with the patient sitting over the edge of the bed. Begin with the usual general inspection of the head and neck. Look for craniotomy scars, neurofibromas, facial asymmetry, ptosis, proptosis, skew deviation of the eyes, or inequality of the pupils. The cranial nerves are then examined roughly in the order of their number. The first, olfactory nerve, can be tested with bottles of substances with non-pungent smells, but it is usually enough to ask the patient if there has been any problem with his or her sense of smell. Have you noticed any problems with your sense of smell? No. The second, optic nerve, is tested first by assessing visual acuity. Do you normally wear spectacles to read? The patient should wear spectacles if he normally uses them. Each eye is tested separately, while the other is covered with a small you card. You hold that out at arm's length and read the lowest line that you can see clearly for me. L-C-Y-R-E-H-B. Fantastic. OK, we'll just swap over. If you can cover your eye there. And just hold that one out. L-C-Y-R-E-N-B. Terrific. The visual fields are examined by confrontation using a hat pin. The examiner's head should be level with the patient's head. Just cover head. up your eye for Each me. Each eye is tested separately. Just keep focusing on my nose. Hello, I'm Eve Bargman, and this is Doug Arant, and we'll be demonstrating today a brief neurologic exam. You can do a much longer neurologic exam, and you will if you find any abnormalities, but this is the brief screening neurologic exam that you'll be doing as part of your physical examination. Now, the neurologic exam has five main sections. The first is mental status, where you ask the patient a few questions, then cranial nerves, testing the cranial nerves, sensation, strength, and coordination, and we'll do those more or less in order. So we'll start with mental status. And with mental status, I just ask you several, several silly questions and you get to answer me. Okay. And I can pick questions at random. Can you tell me today's date? Today's date is December 21st. Okay, can you tell me the year and the day of the week, too? Today is Thursday, and the year is 2000. Good, thank you. And do you know what this place is that we're in? We're in the Davis Building. Well, good. <laughs> and how about the, uh, the town and the... This place is Charlottesville, Virginia. Good, thank you. And that's, those are orientation questions. You can also ask questions like um, calculation. Can you take 100 and subtract 7? Mm -hmm. I can. It's 93. Good, and take 7 from that. Uh, that would be 86. Excellent. So Bill would have no trouble with mental status whatsoever. <laughs> Next thing you do is cranial nerves, and you'll recognize some of those from having done them before when you're examining the eye and examining the ear. Um, cranial Oh, yeah, that's me. Hi, Tom. My name is Alyssa. I'm going to do your head to toe. Cool. You can just follow me. Have a seat. And why are you here today, Tom? Oh, I got a job at the hospital, and uh, they asked me to come in for a physical. Oh, okay, great. I'm going to start off with some of your vitals. You can open your mouth and put this under your tongue. Tight seal. Ninety-eight point seven. You're feeling all right? Yeah, yeah, I feel good. Great. You need to get your blood pressure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I normally run like, like one twenty over eighty. Mm. Great. Squeeze it up. If you're uncomfortable any time, too tight, you just let me know. All right. Twenty-two over seventy-eight. Cool. Okay. I'm just gonna take a look at your eyes now. Okay. If you can just take a look at this ear. Okay. Keep your eyes there. Okay. <laughs> There are a few different very specific problems in and about the hip that we'd like to be able to clinically diagnose so we can focus our treatment. One of those is SI joint dysfunction. SI joint, we're going to have him turn around, is basically the junction of your sacrum, the mid, mid part of the lower body of your lumbar spine, and the iliac crest. 
at the sacroiliac junction, this can cause irritation and pain directly as you point over that area. A simple way to evaluate for SI joint dysfunction is to do a stork test or a single leg extension. So we'll have the patient stand on one leg, and we're going to have him arch backwards. If this causes pain directly at his SI joint on the ipsilateral side, the same side as the leg down, then I'm concerned about the possibility of SI joint pain. In addition, second part of the examination we can do as he's lying down. The second part of the examination for the sacroiliac joint is done with the patient supine. And what we'll do is we're going to do a flexion, abduction, and external rotation test. So basically we flex the knee, we abduct the leg, and we keep it in external rotation. I'm going to have my hand stabilizing the pelvis, and as I force the leg into this flexion, abduction, external position, if he has pain in the posterior aspect of his pelvis over his SI joint, that would be considered a positive Patrick test or a positive Faber test. <laughs>